Hi, have you ever wondered what is a rocking test? Why do we do this test? Many of the candidates preparing for exam seem to be very disturbed with this question. Many are not able to visualize. Not their fault. Very few get an opportunity to see a swing bearing. Hence they are not able to imagine. If you are one of them, then you are in the right place. In this video, we will see what is a swing bearing, what is inside a swing bearing and why is it so. How is it fastened to the crane pedestal? We will also learn about the rocking test. Why is it done and what is the significance? Is it very very important? Well, for a guy going for exams it is. But for people in the field trying to ensure reliability, it is not. Surprised, huh? I will tell you why. Along with the case study and personal experience. But the answer is in the end of the video. So please don't abandon it halfway. You are watching Chief Engineers Tea Time Talk and I am Ramesh the pilot welcoming you to this channel. If you like my previous videos, please do subscribe in case you are not done so. Let's learn while we relish a cup of tea as well. Thank you so much. Continue watching. Enjoy your video. Here you see a crane pedestal welded to the deck. This is stationary and we are going to have a crane turret which is going to turn to the starboard side and port side for discharging. It is a no brainer that whenever we have a rotating part and a non rotating part, we need a bearing. So let us have a bearing here and then the crane turret is fastened to the bearing. Now I have a bearing surface which will allow the crane turret to rotate from port side to starboard side. This bearing here we call it as the slewing bearing. The turning of the turret from the port side to the starboard side for discharging is called slewing. And when we say a bearing, we always imagine a inner race and a outer race except when we have a bush or journal bearings. Let us see the fitment in detail here to understand the general fundamental principles of slewing bearing. The inner race is getting fastened here to the flange. So there it goes. What you see here is the gear teeth which is a part of the inner race. And here comes the turret. Now let us bring the outer race. So here we have the outer race. And this outer race is fastened to the turret. The turret is going to turn with respect to the pedestal. So we need members to reduce the friction and also to bear the load of the turret. So obviously we have to provide some members which are going to do this job. So this is a conventional one. I am going to have my set of rollers which have taken the load of the weight of the turret and also provide a frictionless minimum friction surface for the turning of the turret. Now let us see how does the turret turn. I have a motor which has got a pinion. It may be hydraulic motor, slewing motor we call it, which has got its pinion, which is meshing to the gear teeth of the inner race. Now when I rotate the motor, obviously the inner race will not be able to turn because it is fastened to the rigid crane pedestal. So just to keep Mr. Newton happy and obey Newton's third law of the reaction forces. The whole turret turns. The next thing, the jib is going to go completely to the starboard side, lump down and discharge the cargo. And also rotate and do some work in this position. So what is going to happen? The turret will tend to topple like this while continuing to discharge. So 
to take the load of toppling and allow a frictionless surface for the turret to work in this position we have another set of bearings where we put here rollers now let us have a look here i have a ship and suppose the ship list to the starboard side because of the list what is going to happen this turret will tend to slide like this towards the starboard side because there will be an incline and the crane is still going to continue to work in this position so that means i need some component to take care of the load because of this listing which will be radial so i need another set of rollers here so this roller is going to take care of the forces which originate because of the listing and also toppling both will be taken care of so this is in fact capturing the gist of the requirements of a slewing bearing you may have slewing bearings of different designs made by different makers some of them may have rollers some of them may have balls but it has to take the various loads load due to the weight load due to the toppling and the load due to the listing a regular greasing of these rollers cannot be underestimated there may be 18 to 20 greasing points and you can rest assured that many will not be working the crew may not be trained enough to check if grease is going to every grease nipple maybe they are not being supervised so it is fair to presume that the possibility of slewing wearing running dry and wearing out is not unreal it might definitely happen so we'll have a lot of grease nipples here like this and it is our duty to make sure that all of them are in working condition and greasing is done regularly now how do we check whether this slewing wearing is in good condition well that's what this rocking test is all about finding out how much is the wear in the slewing wearing a uh, damaged slewing wearing could uh, throw your ship off air and you cannot start earning unless you visit a dry dock so that's the importance so here you can see a slewing wearing and the rollers are all in good shape without any wear out so you can see there is hardly any clearances between the balls and the between the rollers and the surfaces the technique is quite simple just imagine how we used to judge if a bearing is good or not good we just used to measure the relative movement of the outer race with respect to the inner race if there is movement we say the bearing needs renewal we are just going to do that over here we are going to center the jib like this and take a reading with the dial gauge we slew the jib completely to the starboard side and luff it down obviously the turret will try to topple like this like this it will topple unless until this roller stops the toppling because the sur this surface will come in contact with this roller here if there is a clearance it can be captured by the dial have a look again you see now we do the same thing by slewing the jib completely to the other side so we go to the other side and the opposite is going to happen you can see here also the tilting is happening so now the clearance is come at the bottom roller and the gauge is capturing this now these readings will reflect the clearance in the slewing bearing and give us a fair amount of insight into the wear down of the rollers and tracks some makers also suggest to take the measurement here this measurement is also going to change as the turret topples to the port or starboard side depending upon the wear down have a look now concentrate on the here you see here how it is changing you see once you have the readings in place be guided by the makers instructions many will give you a form to fill and also the position at which the reading should be taken normally it is taken with the jib completely facing forward then rotate it to the starboard side then the jib should face aft and then to the port side so let's have a look there so one form will be given like this and the maker will give you all the instructions how to go about now this completes the understanding of the rocking test now is it a great idea to depend on the readings of the rocking test the simple answer is no yours truly as a experience wherein rocking test was just great but the slewing roller tracks were in fact broken and damaged many rollers had lost all the chrome hardness the giveaway was when the grease came out with uh, shining 
with chrome here you can see some photos of a slewing bearing which was removed we can see the surface damage but then the rocking test was good you see some of the rollers were orientation is not correct still the rocking test was good so don't wait for a rocking test to fail you can continue to do the rocking test for the happiness of pms auditors and other inspectors but testing grease regularly is like a health check but rocking test is like a taking a ecg to decide if you want to go and call in an ambulance so what is the best way out analyze the grease at regular intervals a visual inspection of the grease provided that people are greasing of course or the grease which is coming out that is going to give you a big clue and if you have a problem flushing out of the old grease if it is contaminated will help you extend your life so there are some set norms in the industry the maker is giving you enough guidance about how should be the grease and what are the allowable parameters which is uh, acceptable so based on all this we can determine whether a swelling bearing is in good shape or not hope you enjoyed watching see you till next time with a different topic drop in your comments all the best for people going for exams and happy sailing and